Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at AFV Clubs 251 slash 3 out C uh, Command Half Track or Funk Panzerfagen, which is basically a signal or command post half track with the various radio and communication equipment uh, related to HQ elements from German Panzer Grenadier units during the Second World War. This is one of the many different variants of both the Aus C and Aus D. Uh, 251 that AFE Club have released over the last couple of years. This particular kit um, dates from 2009, I believe, and its reference number is AF35S50. So that's AF35S50. Um, pretty nice, uh, comprehensive kit in the box. We get all our radio equipment as we'd expect for Command Fagel. We have the very uh, iconic and um, interesting radio um, bed spring style array. Um, there's two command versions of the 251 I believe which is the 251 slash 3 and the 251 slash 6. I think the only difference is the, the slash 6 has the collapsible star antenna mount on the uh, rear plate of the half track which this kit does not include. Um, other kits on the market are also from Dragon, which I believe it's the Slash 6 they have, which basically is pretty much the same, has a few more radios and has that collapsible antenna, mounted, uh, antenna that I've mentioned earlier. So on the side of the box we have some photographs of the actual built-up model, which is always nice. And one on the other side. So uh, let's actually have a look inside the box and see what we get. So looking at the instructions, it's our very standard booklet style exploded diagram instruction manual. First page we have some colour callouts and the legends for the icons. Um, the colours included are basically the Gon Gonzo Senio range, Humbrel, Ravel and Life colour. Uh, we also have a little spiel here for aftermarket tracks available from AFE Club. Even though they've misspelled model, they misspelled a model. Uh, well, not, uh, we can't hold that too much against them. Step one, so we'll have the look. So the steps are very um, on busy and um, very easy to follow. So step one, we're having, we're mounting the superstructure sides and some of the details uh, to the suspension, drill down a couple of holes to the, um, the crew compartment floor, nothing too crazy. Step two is just continuing again with the crew compartment. Step three, so step three, some of our running gear and tires, again not really too crazy there. The suspension arms or whatever, the axle I believe you call that, I'm not a car guy. Uh, for the uh, the front wheels, and then the mounting of these. Step six is the mounting of the torsion bars and sprocket and return, uh, or should I say, the idler uh, mounts. This is probably the busiest um, step in the entire construction of this model, uh, but it's still not too jarring, so it should be just fine. Step seven, uh, mounting onto the wheels. Again, nice and clear. Step 8, so now we're actually beginning to mount the interior, so the driver and co-driver slash operator positions are being installed. The firewall and uh, steering and instrument panels, if you will, are going in from step 9 onwards. Because it's an open top vehicle and the way that the hull is positioned, I would recommend painting these separately, as in the upper and lower hull, and then cement cementing them down. Um, just to make life a little bit easier with you. I've, I've built a few um, 251s in the past and that's how I tend to tackle the uh, interior. So step 10, we're mounting fusion blocks. Again, these seem nicely detailed. Not much to them. Can be modeled open and closed, I believe. Then we had some of the small benches for the uh, crew compartment. Then we move on to the rather complex. These can be a little bit tricky, these um, swinging doors that we get on the 251Cs. Uh, they are fully functional if you uh, build them properly, should you want to. 
Step 13, the mounting of the, uh, of the rear doors, working hinges again, we have some ammunition drums for the MG34 or 42 depending which you install, and a fire extinguisher, has you painting it red, there's always a bit of debate, should it be painted um, yellow or red, I tend to paint mine red just to add a bit of colour, don't really care all that much, whatever it is. Step 14, it's kind of the final major assembly, so we're fitting down the engine axis hatches on the hood of the vehicle or the bonnet. Um, the front of the transmission or engine compartment, um, the armoured roof for the MG34 or or 42 machine gun goes. And um, then we have a rather busy little element here which is the adding of the fission ports for the driver and co-driver. Again these can be modelled open and shut. Step 15, we start moving into the Pacific radios that make this a command vehicle. So very nicely um, done of by AFE Club that they've actually given us proper little painting call outs for the faces of the radios though I would recommend just googling or YouTube uh, googling um, image searching the um, the radio so you know what colors of paint them just make life a little bit easier so 15 16 and 17 is all the particulars of the radio 18 okay we're moving on now to the side fenders um, unfortunately the storage bins are modelled closed. Um, imagine if you buy photo wedge upgrades you probably can have them workable if you so wish. It's not a big deal but again it's something um, that you get with the um, Dragon 251Ds especially that you can have their um, storage bins modelled to open. Again the final elements of the interior and the mounting of the um, fenders on step 19. 20, we have these weird cheek armor plates for the engine that um, gives us two options depending what um, type of 251 you're building, whether what factory it's from basically. Then we have the big radio suite that gets installed and our clearance and indicator uh, posts get also get installed. Then we have the um, adding of the tracks. The tracks in this are rubber band style final tracks. However, they are very good. I've used, I actually have never felt the need to upgrade their tracks because they actually lock into the wheels. So you can paint up, you can paint and glue them up, and then just push them down onto the wheels, and they'll, the teat will lock them in place. So you don't have to glue them down to make them conform to the sag. It's very handy. And we're almost there now. Step 22. So you can kind of see that the steps aren't too busy. So this is a, I like this. You know, you're not, you know, I mean, you don't have a million and one steps like you do in Revel, um, like each, like in uh, Revel instructions. That each step has quite a bit going on and can get a bit confusing. So now we're adding the armament to the half track. So we have our gives us the option of an MG, uh, an MG42 or an MG34, depending on what time you're you're modeling this. I'm uh, modeling um, a. A command vehicle from Kharkov, so I'm going to probably put it with an MG34. But however, I could use a 42 if I really wanted to. Too. But uh, I'm building a Pacific vehicle, which I'll talk about at the end of this video. Then we have the really iconic bed um, spring antenna mount or mast. This is a little bit fragile. When we come to look at this in the plastic, we'll actually see that this is a pretty fragile assembly. And then we have a small stretch sprue. Um, 4 centimeter or four, whatever the hell they're called or 1.4 meter antennas and it gives us, tells us to stretch sprue at 3.5 centimeters. 24 we have a little uh, generator which I have no clue what the hell you're meant to do with as in I don't know where it's meant to go but still it's nice that's included. We also get quite a few jury cans in this which is nice and we have some headphones for the radios and step 25 basically has us installing the little foot ladder which is this uh, assembly here and it fits to the side of the vehicle. This is optional, I, I haven't actually seen these mounted on many vehicles. I think it was just a way to allow, allow guys to climb up on top of the, the um, antenna mast here. And then on the rear of the vehicle then we mount some photo etch. Um, jerry can mounts and our convoy lights so not too bad this should be a pretty quick build actually and then we go on to our paint and call out so we get um, a pretty decent uh, array of markings most of them are from Russia so we have Panzer Grey 9th Panzer Division Russia 41 
We have 11 pa um, Panzer Division um, winter 1942-43, again from Russia. This is field grey and whitewash. We have again a German grey vehicle from the 14th Panzer uh, Grenadier Division or Panzer Division Ukraine 42. Uh, then we get one again from the 4th Panzer Division, um, which is um, doesn't say from what year, and that's like a, a white camouflage over a grey Panzer grey. And then finally, we have the 5th Leashed Division, which I think is the 5th Light Division, Libya, uh, March 41, so that's North Africa. And then we have it in dark yellow and Panzer Grey. And then last page, we have a sprue map here. It's not the best sprue map in the world I've ever seen, however, uh, it does the job. And then we have, if you're missing some parts, you can um, send away for them. However, it's just for Taiwan only, so the, the rest of us in the world are pretty sunk. Okay, so with the instructions out of the way, we have a look at the decals and the photo etch fret that's included in the kit. So, oh, so the decals are printed by AFV Club. They're a little bit glossy and there's a bit of a texture on them. But it is a pretty comprehensive um, sheet. We get quite a few divisional markings, uh, quite a few um, registration plates. They're all fur marked, so there's no SS uh, markings. So if you're doing an SS vehicle, you're going to have to go after market or go to your spares. But an interesting note, we actually have the Africa Corps, a little bit hard to see in this. We have the Africa Corps um, palm tree in Swazi, and the Swazi isn't... Um, Censored, so that's that's pretty interesting because that can be a bit annoying when they censor history, and this means you have to go out and buy separate ones. Then we get a small photo etch fret. I'm not going to bother take it out. We all seen photo etch frets before. Focus. There we go. So we just have the photo etch spines for the jerry cans and a few of the um, two um, rack foldable racks for the jerry cans on the rear of the vehicle. Not too crazy there. Still a nice addition. And because I'm building a Pacific vehicle, so I might as well get this out of the way now, I've gone and bought an aftermarket um, decal set. This is an old set from um, Echelon um, aftermarket decals. I think they're under the name of Star Decals now. And this is um, 251 Emil, um, which is apparently Piper's uh, 251 command from Kharkov. So I'm building a little diorama about his vehicle. Um, it's not really much known about it. Like even the the the, um, the decals basically say you have a lot of options, and I'm not even sure if it's a two five one slash three or six. I'm building mine as a three because that's what I have. So like the decal sheet's pretty small. So I got this from eBay, and that's that's a little decal sheet from 2007. So we have some. Now these are very nice. They're all perfectly in register. Furry, 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 thin stuff. Good, stuff, like you know. So these, these shouldn't have um, given me any problems whatsoever. So we have like the name Emil, the the thirty tactical um, numbers on it, and then because you actually don't know what the um, registration number was, so we get a full set of numbers. We get some first SS um, iconography for division markings, which is good because I need it for my Kharkov Tiger as well. So I'm going to take one of them from this. And uh, that's really it. So that's going to be uh, an upcoming build once the Tiger and my T62 is out of the way. So moving on to the plastic, um, a little bit bizarrely, we have two colours of plastic in this. We have this horrible tan, yellow, kind of sick looking colour. And then we have the standard um, AFE Club kind of olive green plastic that we're very used to. So we'll go and have a look at some of the details. So this has most of the interior for the, uh, the crew compartment. So we'll have a look at the compartment floor. Some nice embossed detail there, very nice. We have a full detailed um, underside to this vehicle, so that's pretty good if you ever want to have it on its side for whatever reason. The firewall. It's pretty nice. Um, there's a separate plate that sits across that. There is some pin marks here and there. But most of them are on the inner sides of things, so that, that's not too bad. Um, what else do we have? The the front armor plate for the fission ports for the driver and co-driver. 
The thing what I find with a lot of AFV Club plastic is it's somewhat brittle, so be a little bit careful removing these from their sprues. They will snap just to mess with you. Here's the instrument panel, pretty nicely detailed. The fire extinguishers, and um, these are the armored locking lugs for the um, the uh, the armored covers for the few ports. And use a pointy stick. There we go. Uh, this is the mount for our steering wheel, our clearance posts. These are very, very fragile. I've broken these so many times I can't keep up anymore. We also have a small personal radio here. Unfortunately, the camera does not like um, this. This color is confusing the camera somewhat. So we have a small little radio here, which is like the per the, the, the vehicle's like um, Pacific radio. Um, Pretty nice, not really much to, to sing home about. Uh, the other radios are a little bit nicer, but you're not going to even see this. It sits in beside the driver. So that's the main part of the sprue, and then we have obviously the. Helps if I can get in shot, which I can't because I'm shit. Oh my god. So there we have the iconic gun shield and the machine gun mount. And then the splash gear that goes across the uh, gunner's position. So that's one sprue. And then we go back to the green sprues, which I'll zoom out. So we have the, the sides of the vehicle and the torsion mount bars already, or the torsion mount already uh, molded in. Details pretty nice. There should be a little bit of interior detail too. Some of the the mounting points for the various radios, MG30 or MG, MP40 weapon mounts and all that and then like the rifle racks so uh, it's all embossed so it shouldn't uh, confuse you in any way steering wheel is pretty nicely done so steering wheel <laughs> not much to it uh, some nice entrenching tools or um, on ditching tools the rear doors I don't that swing open these are pretty um, fragile assemblies to, to get the hinges right and here are the infamous hinges that can be a bit tricky. They are they are pretty nice once they're built up but uh, they can be a bit of a pain in the arse. Here's these cheap blocks I was telling you about that you have two options of depending from what factory these vehicles were built from because there were several manufacturers. Everyone calls it a Hannah Mag, that's just one manufacturer. And they all have slight differences to each other depending from what factory they came out of. Not much to say, it's pretty nice, there's no warping, and that's more so because it's tooled with its centre brace coming down, so that stops any warping. It does have the option to have the engine bay open, but there is no engine details or firewall details in really, uh, in So it does have the option to have uh, the engine hatch uh, hatches open, but there is no um, engine nor firewall detail included in this kit, but you could aftermarket it, market it if you so wish. Then we're back to this discussing plastic again so um, here are the benches for the crew compartment um, the handrails these are very delicate watch out when you're removing them they can break quite easily and we get two of these but we're only going to be using one of, one of these sprues as the rest of the interior is taken up by the radio equipment we get two of these sprues and these are our drive and re our return um, this is our running gear our drive gear our leaf springs for our our axle and then some of the steering link steering linkages it's pretty um, it's pretty comp comprehensive and should build up quite nicely it's not too much to say on this kit like they're lovely they're lovely vehicles but they're very simple so we get two of these sprues and obviously this is our running gear so we have our tire two pieces um, if I remember correctly you don't it's not too bad when they're in, they're in two pieces you don't get a massive seam running down the middle um, at least I believe so if I remember correctly it's been a while since I built one also, you get our running gear. Very nice crisp detail here, you know, nice, um, nice river detail. So, this should build up and take uh, oil washes pretty nicely. And we obviously get two of those. We get our one piece fenders. These sometimes can be a bit tricky to fit because there is a bit of a bow in them. They are meant to have it, but uh, just some careful alignment should have them fit into their tabs quite easily. They have very nice, generous locator tabs. There is a bit of flashing on these parts like uh, here and along the inner edges so just a quick pass of a sanding stick should sort that right out some more interior sprues we get 
an unloaded MP40 for the mounting racks beside the driver and co-driver. Then we have their seating arrangement, their two um, driver and radio operator or co-driver seats. We have a small MP40 magazine um, rack. Again, the camera doesn't like picking up any of the detail on this plastic for some reason. And then we have some of our fission port and fission block details. Kind of simple. This kit is showing its age. It's from 2009, so it is getting a little bit old now. Then we have our weapon sprues. Helps them actually in shot. So we have a few Mauser um, K98 or K9, K98 rifles. We have our MG34 and MG42. And we have um, our machine gun drum, or like ammunition drum with a big sink mark in the middle of it because reasons. Uh, luckily for the most part most of us will have a load of these lying around if we have any German army sets or infantry sets. We get two folded bipods for the machine guns and we have two um, ammunition belts that are really kind of garbage. They're not nice. To, <laughs> they don't even look like ammo belts and they don't, they don't even have detail on the other side. They're blank so uh, I would recommend, it looks like a, almost looks like a hot kitch style machine gun where you have like the stick of ammunition. So these aren't much work to you, but luckily or hopefully you'll have some in your spare boxes that if you want to have ammunition uh, draped over the machine guns. So now we move on to the actual command vehicle Pacific uh, sprues. So this is our radio racks. Um, really nice, these are newer sprues. Well actually, even though they're actually dated 2007, um, so they're actually, geez, these are quite old as well. Um, so we'll pull you in and have a proper look at the detail. So the detail on the radio faces is really nicely done. So some careful painting will pick out all them di dials and uh, displays quite easily. We have some of the mounts for the um, the large bed spring antenna that goes on top of the fecal. This is very fragile, I can tell by looking at it, and bearing in mind uh, AFE Club um, plastic is notoriously brittle as it is, so uh, some sharp or fresh knives, uh, hobby blades are going to be very imperative if building this kit. We have two battery or fuse boxes, I believe, for powering the radios. And then we have a few more radio and filing type cabinet style jobs. I don't even know what they call that. This is probably for storing maps or batteries. So again, it's very nicely detailed. No flash on any of these parts, which is nice. We have a large antenna. This actually is one of the best little antennas I've seen. Um, it looks somewhat in scale. Which is kind of nice. Um, I don't know what variant this is from though. I don't think this is from the six. So say no. Uh, these are almost like knife fighting equipment, like the big, the big bulb. It's like, a, it's like an IOR, IOR bulb and mount. So this might be from one of their D variants, because it would be a lot of common parts from what the kits they could use. Then we have another style bed spring or like bed frame style um, antenna. Again, very, very delicate. So care should be taken while removing this from the sprue. We also have another version of the gun shield and the mounting arms for the MG34 and then the anti-aircraft mount for the MG42 on the rear of the vehicle. And then finally, at least with the sprues that is, we have a nice sprue of um, jerry cans, which is great because you can never have too many jerry cans. And these are pretty nicely detailed. And uh, you'll have like a small photo etch spine that's sandwiched between the two parts. Um, and then we have a small little uh, draining kind of tube here that you can fit into them as well. So it's kind of cool. It's obviously half a sprue, but still enough to kind of help decorate your vehicle as you're going to the bits box. And finally, we have the tracks. Which I shall zoom in and hopefully you can see. So the tracks are um, final rubber band style. However, um, as I was saying before, 
these tr um, tracks will literally bite into the wheels, meaning that the, the cavity between each wheel, the guide horn is slightly thicker, so when you push it down, it conforms to the wheels and doesn't slip out. So you don't really have to go after market. These are actually quite good tracks. I can't remember if they're susceptible to plastic glue or super glue. I say just a dab of super glue would do the job. And they are pretty damn good. So there you have it. Um, my little take on this kit. It's, I would recommend it. It's quite a good kit. It should be nice and simple to put together with enough complexity to keep you interested. So um, we'll be seeing this all built up in a project in the not so distant future. Thank you for uh, listening this far because I know it's a bit rambly. It's been a while since I've done a, a review. So uh, stay tuned and there'll be plenty more reviews in the future. Thanks so much. Happy modelling as always. And watch out for those buses. Bye bye.